Which camp are you in? I am a rock, I am an island, or no man is an island unto himself. Think about it for a minute and let's come back to it. This past 4th of July, I found myself reading several articles on the difference between freedom and independence. And the articles were written in the context of the 4th of July holiday and freedom and independence as concepts of a society within a country. But it really got me to thinking for the first time about the difference. And it also made me think about the difference from a personal perspective. I enjoy a lot of freedoms in my privileged life. But the struggle between dependence and independence has been a lifelong one for me, but not in the way you might think. You might think that by the time midlife comes around, you'd been working towards and striving for as much independence as possible. I've had exactly the opposite struggle, though. Through most of my life, I've been fiercely independent, almost to a fault. Some of it I was born with but some of it I learned through childhood experiences that reinforced being completely independent as not just a character trait, but a survival mechanism. When I was about three years old, I was the flower girl in my uncle's wedding. And after the wedding was over, we all exited the church and there was a steep set of stairs that came down to the street. And at the top of those stairs, I stood with the ring bearer, who was about six years old, and he reached over to take my arm to help me down the stairs. I promptly yanked my arm out of his and said, I can do this all by myself and headed down the stairs alone. The whole family had quite a chuckle and it became the story that was told over and over again to back up the fact that Chris is incredibly independent and always has been. This poor little boy was just trying to help and be a little gentleman, but I insisted on doing it myself. And while some of that character trait was definitely inborn in me, through some unfortunate childhood trauma, I learned over and over again that the only person in the world that I could count on to keep me completely safe was myself. It became such a deeply ingrained character trait that I began to think that it was something that was not only a very positive thing, but was actually quite noble and brave. I didn't just want to be self-sufficient. I saw it as a survival mechanism to keep myself safe. Now let's go back to the no man is an island unto himself versus I am a rock, I am an island. The John Donne passage that this refers to And I'm paraphrasing here, but I'm going to read it a little bit. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. And the Paul Simon lyrics say, I have my books and my poetry to protect me. I am shielded in my armor, hiding in my room, safe with my womb. I touch no one and no one touches me. I am a rock. I am an island. And a rock feels no pain and an island never cries. Boy, reading those lyrics now, I really realized how much those lyrics spoke to my childhood trauma. These two quotes came to me as an assignment, an essay assignment from one of my professors in college. And he put these two quotes up on the board and asked us to write an essay with some commentary, compare and contrast. It was really kind of a loose assignment, but basically just whatever comes to mind when you read these two quotes. And at the time I made the argument that the Paul Simon lyrics were the more accurate portrayal of what life should be. And I'm sure I proceeded to back it up with all kinds of examples and and arguments. But now when I look back on that, I see how 
actually really sad the song is and that it's not meant to say that being a rock or being an island is the way to go. It's clearly a protective mechanism to not feel the pain, to not feel, to not cry. And really the John Donne perspective is the way I absolutely see life now. We all are connected. We all need each other. When he says, when one man dies, so do I, it reminds me of the word Mbutu, I think I'm pronouncing that right, which is a word that means something like my humanity is tied to yours. I think it's it's some kind of an African proverb. I'll figure that out and put it um, either in the comments or on the screen here. But the point being that the stance that I took on this assignment at that point very much shows where I was in my journey of dependence versus independence. And as I think about the issues surrounding midlife and our later years, our el more elderly years, I think about independence being something that as you get older, you struggle to hold on to your independence. You want to be able to drive your own car places. You want to be able to do things on your own to care for yourself. And you really struggle to hold on to that independence. And I just find it funny that I'm just now getting to the point where I feel comfortable with being dependent. Maybe not comfortable, that's a little bit of a stretch, but I'm working towards being more dependent now in my 50s. And man, at some point I might have to about face that and go the other direction again. I don't know. It's one of those conundrums that as you go through periods of life, things ebb and flow. I'm wondering what your perspective is on that. What do you fear about becoming too dependent when you get older? And how do you think about that in your life now? Do you, do you need to try to be more dependent or do you still need to work on being independent? I don't know. It's different for everybody, isn't it? And this showed up all through my life in many ways, big and small. It showed up in my career with an inability to delegate when I had many people to delegate to. It showed up as not being able to ask my manager for help when I really needed it. And it took years for me to realize that and overcome it. It's also shown up in my marriage. And I've been incredibly lucky to have a partner who recognized this way sooner than I did and who was always there to reassure me and to demonstrate to me that he had my best interests at heart and that he was a safe place. I still struggle with it today. And although I'm better at asking for help when I need it, it's still very difficult for me every time. It's scary and it's very uncomfortable. But I understand intellectually that it's actually very healthy to ask for help. It's actually a sign of strength to ask for help when you need it. And the way I have to reframe it for myself is that when I ask for help, it doesn't mean that I'm incapable or that I'm weak or that I'm less than. It just means that I recognize that there's somebody in my life who can do something either better or easier for me, or maybe it's just to help lighten my load. And here's another thing. I talked about this before in another one of my videos, but sometimes it takes crisis or extreme discomfort for us to really make a big change. And the thing that helped me the most in my life about, about letting go of extreme independence was cancer. When I got cancer, I was forced to depend on people in my life, especially my husband, in a way that I had never had to before. It started with people who showed up for me totally unsolicited, who came to my door with meals and flowers and words of encouragement, people who made playlists for me to listen to while I was going through chemo that would give me strength and determination and peace all of these gifts that just showed up for me at a time when I really, really needed it 
showed me that there were people in the world, not just those close to me, but lots of people in the world who readily had my back, who readily showed up for me to keep me safe and comfortable. But the biggest piece of it was the way that my husband showed up for me. Everything from helping me think through a strategy to beat cancer to setting up all of the appointments that needed to be set up and getting all of the medications that I needed and nursing me through the the surgery recovery that I had to get through and getting me into all of my chemo appointments, driving me, sitting there with me for five, six hours at a time while I had my infusions and helping me with the ice packs that I needed to keep on my hands and feet during the chemo infusions, making sure I had snacks, making sure I was comfortable, getting me home, and then really the Herculean effort of the next two, three, four, five days after my chemo treatments to help me be as comfortable as possible during a time of extreme discomfort the way he showed up for me and not only took care of me, but took care of the rest of my life, our lives together while I was not capable of doing that. And he just shouldered all of that responsibility for six plus months really shook me to my core in terms of challenging my beliefs that I was the only one who could take care of me. Now that I have some years and some deep experience in understanding that people, people who need people, (laughs) let's continue the, the song lyrics theme, that people do need people, that people are social beings, that we're meant to be dependent on each other. That's how we're wired. And that we, when we can depend on each other, it actually makes us stronger and better and happier. It took a lot of unlearning for me to figure that out. And trust is at the very core of that. Trusting that the people around you have your best interests at heart and that will always keep you safe. And what's really important there is that you surround yourself with people who are worthy of that trust. And now that I've come to the realization that I am on the path to having this sorted out, next 4th of July, I'm going to be celebrating my day of dependence. And I wish I could go back and tell myself in my 20s and 30s and 40s that it's okay to let go, that it's okay to be dependent on people, that it's okay to ask for help. I really wish I could have done that. I have some other advice for my 20 and 40 year old selves in a couple of other videos that I'll link here. And I'm curious about how you handle that balance in your life between dependence and independence. There's the self-sufficient piece versus the independent piece and they're different. We all wanna be self-sufficient, but trying to be completely independent has its downsides. What do you think? Let's chat about it in the comments.